Here now to discuss is Middle East expert at the Hudson Institute, Michael Pregen, member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, New York Congressman Lee Zeldin, and national security analyst at the Clarion Project, Ryan Morrow. Good to have you all here. Michael, I want to start with you. Sure. So Ben Rhodes, former top Obama White House official, says Iran's complying the with the deal. How is that? Well, Iran says they're complying with the right. deal. Is that good enough for you? It's not good enough for me. I mean, this aspiring novelist, his greatest piece of fiction was selling the Iran deal to his echo chamber. Uh, ben Rhodes is out of government now. He was the deputy national security advisor for strategic communications. He, he's not in the intel community. And this uh, State Department claim that Iran is complying, again, like you said, it relies on Iran telling us they're complying, uh, submitting samples that they pick from declared sites to present to a highly intimidated IAEA. Mm -hmm. So, so I would rather the intelligence community verify that Iran is in compliance than Ben Rhodes as a as a civilian or the State Department. All right, so let's go to someone who's actually in the government, Representative uh, Zeldin. I wonder uh, what you say to what uh, the former administration is claiming. And the Iranian foreign minister was out on Twitter a couple of days ago saying, "We're complying with the deal. It's time for the U.S. to comply." Is Congress ready finally to hold Iran's feet to the fire? Well, Congress has been ready to hold Iran's feet to the fire since last Congress. Uh, we had an administration. Ben Rhodes, uh, he's the former uh, taxpayer-funded White House fiction writer. That's what you know, his job was to create a narrative of the Obama foreign policy to best sell for domestic politics. Now he's just, you know, that was his title then. Now he's just a <coughs> former. Uh, well, I hear you, Congressman. Ben Rhodes would obviously say that, that no, it was not fiction. But I guess I'm trying to figure out, we know the past, but what's the future? What is this Congress? We've been talking about this for a couple of years. What can you actually do about it? So we need the assistance of the administration with a new administration. I mean, Congress has a couple of main functions. One is oversight, the House Foreign Affairs Committee uh, conducting hearings and bringing facts to life as it relates to uh, what was just referenced with secret side deals between the IAEA and Iran, the verification mm -hmm. agreement, and stories about how Iran collecting some of their own soil samples or inspecting their own nuclear sites. Uh, you know, so w when the House Foreign Affairs Committee is conducting those hearings, the oversight function is helpful. From the legislation and appropriation standpoint, uh, wherever we can ramp up sanctions and pressure, we need to put the leverage back on the table. That's what, <coughs> what happened with Obama, the Obama administration cutting the Iran nuclear deal in the first place, is that we had the leverage that brought the Iranians to the table, negotiated away that leverage on this flawed, unsigned mm -hmm. political commitment, and left all the other bad activities off the table altogether. Uh, and now we need to put the leverage okay. back on the table to bring them back so we can talk about all the other bad activities. Well, speaking about that leverage, I want to bring in Ryan Morrow. Ryan, there's this Iranian opposition group which claims they have evidence that the Iranians have actually been cheating on the deal. Do, are we to believe this opposition group? What's their credibility? Well, they have a history of credible reporting on nuclear activities. They revealed two hidden nuclear sites in 2002. And this is an Iranian opposition group that is fighting for secular democracy and not Sharia law. Okay. So look at okay. the contrast here. You have the Iranian All right. I'm sorry. I think your mic uh, is, is off a little bit. We're going to try to fix that. I want to uh, go back to Michael. What, what do you know about this Iranian opposition group? Well, what I know is uh, they're, they're credible. Yes, they were a designated, or they, they're an umbrella group for a designated a formerly designated terrorist group, the MEK, one that Iran targeted, one that Iran, uh, that Saddam sheltered. But having said that, the information they provided in the past has been, has been spot on, particular to Parchin. Now, what we're talking about is this military facility named Parchin, where likely the Russian S-300s went. Mm -hmm. There were trace particles of uranium that the IAEA found. Iran said, we're not doing anything bad here. Instead of declaring that it was a test facility, they said nothing was taking place. Mm. The IAEA found, found samples, and the Obama administration yeah. said, not a big deal. And it is a big deal. Yeah, it is a big deal, for sure. Ryan, I want to go back to you. I'm sorry about that technical problem, but what is your bottom line about this opposition group that's saying, look, there's evidence that there's covert work going on by the Iranian government right now. We need to know about this. Well, they have a history of credible reporting on the issue of hidden nuclear sites, so we need to take it very seriously. But look at the contrast between the Iranian uh, regime, which isn't allowing any women to run for president, and then look at this opposition group, which is led by a woman advocating mm -hmm. secular democracy over Sharia law. It's clear whose side we should be on.
All right, Congressman Zeldin, I want to end it with you. Uh, you're in Congress now. You have a powerful voice there. Uh, by the end of this year, will the Trump administration be able to get the U.S. out of this nuclear deal, as President Trump suggested back during the campaign? Well, strategically, I don't know if the administration would believe that the best uh, strategy would be to just tear up the deal on our end. Uh, actually, by us enforcing the deal, uh, you, you see Iran... Uh, whenever we ramp up sanctions, uh, ramp up pressure with regards to the, their violation of uh, UN Security Council resolutions, test firing intercontinental ballistic missiles, uh, financing terror, overthrowing foreign governments, uh, as you enforce the nuclear deal uh, and you ramp up pressure with all of Iran's other bad activities, it's actually the Iranians mm. who will create the opening for allow us uh, to have new terms. But I, don't, I, think, I don't think the administration believes in just ripping it up. Uh, is the best path forward. I think actually enforcing it will actually help with the international narrative and create a window for a better path forward. Well, a scary situation. Congressman Michael and Ryan, we appreciate you bringing some perspective and insight to this very important debate. Thanks for being Thanks here. Thanks for having me. Thank you.